holding forth the word of life. Thank you for joining us today. And if you get a minute, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would love to know about you. Comment on the message. If you would, we love you and we bless you in Jesus name. We are in the last few days of Savan. Savan is the third month of our spiritual journey began in Nissan, we moved over to ER, and now we're in Savan. And and we want to align ourselves with these messages because the way God moves is different than the way the world moves. The world has the Gregorian calendar to follow. We have the Hebraic calendar to follow. Very powerful in this because this is the timeline of God. This was inaugurated by God to his people. They follow it. And now we have a blessing to be able to follow it as well. And everything about the calendar has signs or signals of what the Lord would have us to know and understand. And as we, as we go through every year of this Hebraic calendar, we become closer and closer to the Lord. We have greater revelation and we are matured spiritually. The Lord is able to give us revelation as we look at these months. Savan is so powerful in that it was on the sixth of Savan that the Torah was given by God. God came down from heaven on on the Mount of Sinai with thunder and lightning, and he brought forth what we know of as the Ten Commandments to the mediator, which was Moses at that time. The significance is, is that God came down. God gave us the Ten Commandments. At that time, it was a way for the people of Israel to know God, to come to understand the secrets of his covenant, if they would obey the scriptures, if they would obey the law. We move from Nisan into Er. Er is a month about healing, and healing is such a foundational principle of the kingdom of God. And many people, even in the church today, uh, do not take Jesus Christ and receive Christ in his fullness. They may receive him as their savior, someone who will save them from their sin or save them from going to hell. But they don't fully understand that Jesus is our healer, Um, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our God, our healer. It is he who heals us. So very powerful. It's very important that we are healed, not only in our physical body, but in our soul. The Lord, as we come to know him, as we begin to sense him, as we understand the word and we follow his voice, we are said to be protected from many diseases, diseases of the soul, And I believe the disease of the soul uh, lends credence to the diseases of the physical body. But if we don't apprehend this truth, appropriate this truth, believe in this truth, carry this truth with us, we will not be able to profit from the truth. Now in Savan, which is the month we're in, about to exit now into Tammuz, We want to be very sure that we receive the fullness of these three months, Nisan, Er, uh, and Savan. This is the, the three months of spring. So we're about to go into another season. And if we don't get these months aligned in our hearts and our minds, we will not be able to profit as we go through, uh, the year. The Lord, uh, counts our days as month, not year by year, but each month. Each month in the Hebraic mindset uh, is, is, is a way to mark time. 
And so this is the beauty of understanding the Hebraic, uh, the Hebraic months. Savan is a month of alignment. And it's a month of giving. We have to align with the two months that came before us. We have to align with God. Remember that God came to give us the Ten Commandments. But also on Savan 6, as we move in, after Jesus died and he was resurrected, he said, carry in Jeru Jerusalem so that you can receive Holy Spirit. And the wonderful thing is Holy Spirit came down from heaven on the sixth of the Savan, just like the Torah, just like God came down from heaven to give Moses the Ten Commandments. Holy Spirit, which was the promise of the Father, came down from heaven to those that were waiting, preparing themselves for Holy Spirit. We know if we go back to the time of giving the Torah, it was on the third day that God came forth to give the Ten Commandments. So Moses was able to go to the people and say, prepare yourself, uh, consecrate yourself, cleanse yourself, put on clean garments, don't have any sexual relationships, you know, set yourself apart only to receive from me. And, and many times, as we need to receive revelation from the Lord, we have to bring ourselves into a time of communion with the Lord, a time of preparation. And the Lord then is able to give us from heaven what we need to change things upon the earth. People don't understand that nothing will ever change on earth unless it's first decided in heaven. Our answers must begin from heaven. They originate in heaven. And then they flow down. The Lord sends us the answer or the solution to earth, which will miraculously change our circumstances. But in order for that to happen, we have to be aligned with God. And God is a giver. He is a giver. Many times we pray for the wrong reasons. We're praying that we can have relief. We're praying that we can have a better life. We're praying that things would um, change, you know, with our children because our children are causing us so much trauma and fear. So we really get off of alignment when we pray that way because the Lord gives because he's a giver. He doesn't expect anything in return. He gives freely. He gives without any strings attached. He gives for our benefit. So as we pray and align ourselves with the Lord this month, let's always remember that at the very point of the failures in our life, if we can become introspective and think about our life and say, you know, Lord, I'm failing here. I'm fa I have depression here. Um, I have financial difficulties here. I'm not getting along with my spouse here. Uh, my children and I don't have a good relationship. You know, it's, it's going to be different. I, I'm very nervous when I go to work. I don't have good office relationships with my coworkers, whatever it might be. It's very good to be able as a believer in Christ to pinpoint these things because the Lord hasn't brought you into a narrow place. When he brought the people out of Egypt and Nisan, he brought them out of a narrow place. He brought them out of the iron furnace. He brought them out of tormenting situation to give them the promised land. Serving the Lord is always about expansion. The Lord wants to expand you. The Lord wants to bless you. But there are areas in our life where we're not being blessed. We shouldn't rail against God at that point because he's not blessing us. We should indeed begin to look at ourselves and see that the blessing that God wants to flow down from heaven cannot reach us because it's coming down this way and we're over here. We're not aligned with the blessing of God. And that's why we have these points of failure. And one of the ways you can know that you're not aligned is that your ego or your selfish desires are blocking what the Lord wants to give you. The Lord is always wanting to give you a gift.
But you have to be able to receive the gift and carry the gift with you. Honor the gift. Know that it comes from heaven. That's really the only way you're going to grow in the Lord is to know that the Lord is the giver. He gave us the the law, but the Lord, he, he gave us the word, but he also gave us the Holy Spirit. And it is the Holy Spirit, once we fully receive him, that is going to carry us through this life and bless us in this life because he's our comforter. He's our counselor. We don't even know what to pray for. We don't know how to pray. We should never pray from our soul or intellect because when we do, we are going to be misaligned. But as we listen to Holy Spirit and as we're led by the Holy Spirit, our prayers will originate in heaven. They'll come down from heaven to earth. And that's what changes your circumstances in life. Holy Spirit is God's gift to you. Acts 2.38, Peter, Apostle Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. A lot of people don't even understand what being born again is all about. It's not uh, reading a prayer or having an emotional experience at an altar. It's about repenting. That means you have thought about your life and there's great sorrow in your life and you want to change. You want, you want to change the way you think. Um, we get the cart before the horse. Divine order is very important in the kingdom of God. People see their behavior and they don't like their behavior and they want to change their behavior. But their behavior never changes. And this is why, because they haven't repented. So what does repentance mean? It merely means you're changing the way you think. You're going to change the way you think about prayer. You're going to change the way you think about God. You're going to change the way you think about blessing. You're going to change the way you think about money. You're going to change the way you think about your children. All of these things are so very important that you change the way you're thinking that is not aligned with God's thinking. Once you align your thoughts with the Lord, then you are positioned to receive revelation from the Holy Spirit. And you will be able to give. And where our issue is, many times we give with strings attached. We even pray selfish prayers. We want our kids to change because they're driving us up a wall. You know what I'm saying? We have to really examine why we're praying for our children or why we're praying for things to change. Why do we want a better income? Is it just so that we can consume it on our lust? Or do we want a better income so that we can be a giver, that we can come to a broader place and that we can help others, that we can give more? These are the issues that would honestly help you if you would begin to meditate on these things and ask the Holy Spirit to give you revelation. When you become born again, Jesus forgives you of all your sins. I mean, he is going to uh, save you from your sins. He doesn't save us or deliver us to continue to sin. No, he saves us from the sin. He delivers us from sin so that we no longer have a desire to sin because sin always wounds you. Sin is a wound and a wound is a sin. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, this phrase is where I really want to concentrate today. And you will receive what? Who? Holy Spirit. Who is a gift? And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Greek word for receive here is labano. Labano means you take from God. You accept from God to carry what he gives you as a prized possession because you realize that it is a gift from God. It is coming from heaven. And because you know it's coming from heaven, you take it, you possess it, you claim it as your own so that you carry it with you everywhere you go. And Holy Spirit 
will be with you as you're conscious of the Holy Spirit. Why? So you can be a selfish person? No, so that you can allow Holy Spirit to speak through you, to minister through you, to empower you. Why? To help others come to know Christ. That is the beauty of this life in the Lord. We don't have a self-centered life. We have a selfless life. We're always thinking, Lord, what will bless this person? Father, show me what to say. Help me to move by your spirit so this person can receive greater freedom, can be blessed in all of their ways. That is so beautiful. And as you move in that kind of mindset, which is the mind of the Lord, the mind of Christ, you're going to change. You're going to transform and you're going to be mightily blessed. Uh, Peter did this. Uh, you know, Peter, before he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he was a very uh, difficult person. Uh, he denied Christ. We know that he was known as somebody that was a uh, uh, a fisherman that used foul language. He was very um, contemptuous at times uh, or tempestuous at times, you could say. Uh, he, he would uh, be quick on the trigger to make judgments. But once Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit, things really changed for Peter. And he understood that he was filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit so that he could move like Jesus moved. And see, this is what I want you to understand. This is a month to align. This is also, Savant is interesting. The constellation in the skies can, uh, that is prevalent is the constellation of Gemini. The interesting thing of Gemini is that it is called the twins. And so when we're aligned with God, we twin with God. We bond with God. Uh, twins in the natural uh, bond before they're even born. They align in the womb before they're even born born. Twins can know what uh, their twin is thinking. They can finish their sentences. Uh, and some twins even have this language. It's a phenomenon. They can have their own language and each of them can understand each other. It's like a secret language. Parents can't understand, but they understand. Why? Because they're so very close. They mirror each other. They're bonded to each other. Uh, they are aligned with each other. This is what the Lord is showing us by the heavens. He wants us to be able to align with him, to twin with him, to be like Jesus. How will you ever be like Jesus? This is how. Receiving Holy Spirit as your gift from heaven. Holy Spirit will sanctify you. Holy Spirit's job is to make you holy, to make your soul whole, your fragmented soul whole, to heal you, to bring you in that you don't have to uh, have, you know, a, two sets of stone, uh, the Ten Commandments, to read them every day. They're actually written and inscribed by the Spirit on your heart because your spirit man has been born again of God and Holy Spirit now comes to dwell in you. Your body indeed is the temple of the Holy Spirit. But I want to remind you, if you must receive Holy Spirit, I'm sure you have been given gifts that ostensibly you took, but you really didn't use it. You may have even took it put it on a shelf. You don't even know who gave it to you anymore. It's just collecting dust or maybe you're regifting it. So see, that's not a gift. A gift is something that you receive for yourself, that you claim for yourself, that you have all intents and purpose that you are going to move with that gift, use that gift, carry that gift with you because it is dear to you. Holy Spirit must be received that way in your life. He is uh, the presence of the almighty God. He is God and he's precious and he's a precious gift. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. So you would not ignore him, would you? You would look to him. You would question him. You would 
um, ask for his leadership. Would you not? Because you're so much aware of his presence in your life and you want his presence and you don't want to grieve him. Uh, you don't want to quench him either. You don't want to cut his power off because he empowers you to witness for the Lord and to share the gospel of God with people. So people can be touched by God through you, Holy Spirit through you. This is what brings us into great abundance and great joy. Matthew 10, 8, heal the sick, Jesus is saying. He's talking to those that are following him, his disciples. And this is what he said to them. He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he says this today to us. You know, you have to understand the word of God is living. It lives today. His message is you are to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Notice it says not to counsel out demons, but to what? Drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. So he's speaking of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit in you that will through you heal the sick, that will through you raise the dead that will through you cleanse those who have leprosy. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that drives out demons. But the Holy Spirit is in you because you've received him. You have freely received him as a gift and you carry him with you everywhere so that you can freely give him to others. You can freely be, be that channel of blessing for others. And remember, it's free. Freely have yours. If you didn't earn Holy Spirit, the Lord gave you Holy Spirit and you graciously received him and accepted him as the precious gift that he is. So therefore you're aligned where you can freely give. In other words, you want to bless all people, even your enemies, even people who don't like you. You want to freely give. That is the mind of Christ. And that's when you are beautifully aligned with God. And that, beloved, is when you're going to expand and be blessed with success in every part of your life. Acts 10, 45. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gift. The, the Lord is pouring the Holy Spirit out on all flesh, men and women, boys and girls, all nationalities. The Lord freely gives Holy Spirit. It's up to us, though, whether we're going to Labana, whether we're going to be able to accept, receive, carry with us, possess, claim, open our life to Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit can access us as well as we being able to access Holy Spirit. And the reason why they saw that the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out on them is verse 46. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Speaking in tongues is so powerful because it is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit on your life. When you speak in tongues, that's just a sign, a signal, an, indi an evidence. Holy Spirit is within you. And when you speak in tongues, you are also going to be magnifying God. You will speak in tongues and you will speak in English. And you'll see that you will be um, wanting to magnify and glorify the Lord. Glorify God. Give him praise. Now, I don't think that you have to speak in tongues to have the Holy Spirit, but I do believe that speaking in tongues is a gift and it, the Lord doesn't have favoritism. He pours it out on all those who are willing to receive it. A lot of Christians don't want to receive uh, the manifestation of the gift or the function of the Holy Spirit, which is tongues. And I would really encourage you, if you don't speak in tongues, um, you're missing out because tongues will expand your spirit. It will help develop your spirit. You'll become stronger in the Lord. You will have greater entrance into 
revelation. The scripture says that tongues will edify you. It will build up your spirit. First Peter 1 Peter 1.12, it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel. How? By the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. When you begin to get aligned with God, and it's so important that this month that you receive the message, align yourself with God. Be a giver without any strings attached. Have a heart to give because you have the gift within you. You have Holy Spirit within you. When you speak, you are not speaking of your own selves. You're not serving yourself. You're not uh, preaching so people will give you accolades or pat you on the back or, or be known as such a great Christian. That's not what your motivation is. No, you are humbly serving other people because you are preaching the gospel, not by your intellect, uh, not by your fancy education, but you're preaching the gospel to people by the Holy Spirit. So you're always accessing Holy Spirit as you're speaking the good news to people. And you want to do that because Holy Spirit is sent from heaven and people really can't receive unless it comes from heaven. When things come from heaven, when revelation comes down from heaven, when the Lord gives you a message by the Holy Spirit, it's coming from heaven, beloved. And the atmosphere of that person changes where they're able to receive it and their life can be changed forevermore. Remember this, the Lord wants you to give. Luke 6, 38 says, give and it will be given to you. You give not to get, you give just for the pleasure of giving. Always examine your motives. James 4, 2, you do not have because you don't ask God. And when you asked, you do not receive because you asked with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. That, beloved, is being misaligned to God. We pray and ask God for things, not to receive things just for ourselves or for our selfishness or for our ego, but we ask to bless others, to bring a little bit of heaven on this earth, that God's will may be done where? On earth as it is done in heaven. Align yourself with God and be a giver. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.